Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of uh, Newpedia. So today we're going to talk about uh, high frequency oscillation uh, as a bedside management. So what is high frequency uh, oscillation? So basically it's a constant distending pressure. Basically what you're giving is a continuous map and uh, with pressure variation uh, oscillating around this map at a very high rate which can reach up to 900 cycles per minute so as you see in this uh, graph uh, below so you can see the dotted line here is the continuous map and you can see the waves around uh, this map here and this is basically the pressures which we're giving and you can see uh, the height or uh, this is what we call amplitude of the wave and you can see the frequency uh, uh, which is basically uh, one cycle uh, 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 per minute uh, basically what how much we, uh, we actually given per minute so this will be uh, the number of cycles we're giving per minute so how it works so there's lots of theories about it i'm not going to dig deep uh, as is not the purpose of this uh, presentation but just to let you know there is some uh, theories like molecular diffusion and taylor uh, dispersion uh, asymmetric velocity profile uh, you might be able to go uh, through these uh, separately uh, uh, but i think it's better to concentrate on how to manage bedside at the moment so what's the indication uh, so the first indication is basically is failure of conventional ventilation uh, so, uh, for example, a baby who's on maximum uh, pressures and uh, a maximum uh, oxygen, 100%, for example, FiO2, and is not achieving the, uh, pro uh, the appropriate uh, saturation. So, uh, we will know that from uh, the oxygenation index, basically. Uh, and you can see the formula there, uh, or the I formula. And if it's more than 15, we need to consider high frequency as a solution. So, um, uh, this might happen basically in many conditions in neonatal practice, like uh, the PPHN or persistent pulmonary hypertension, meconium aspiration, severe respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary hemorrhage, and also diaphragmatic hernia. So, the main difference between the high frequency uh, uh, oscillation and the conventional ventilation, basically, is that if we made any changes in conventional uh, ventilation, for example, increasing the PIP, so this is going to change both, the affect both, basically, the uh, oxygenation and, in the same time, the uh, CO2 removal by one change only. But in here, you have two separate entities basically so if you uh, start adjusting oxygenation this is unlikely to uh, affect your co2 removal uh, and the other way around so to uh, control your oxygenation you have two elements to play with basically is the main airway pressure and the second one is the um, uh, FiO2, how much oxygen basically uh, you're giving to the child. And the other uh, part here is the CO2 removal. And this is controlled by two things here, which is the amplitude. And to make it easy for you, amplitude is works here like the rate, the ventilator rate in the conventional ventilation. So basically, if you have uh, um, hypercarbia, increase CO2, so you have to increase the amplitude to get rid of the CO2. And if it's low, hypocarbia, and you're basically ventilating the baby very well, then you can wean the amplitude down, basically. So it works like the ventilator rate and conventional ventilation. Frequency, you don't have to worry much about it at the moment because basically we're going to fix our frequency at 10 and you you don't need to change it unless you're instructed by a senior colleague like the consultant. So this is the uh, ventilator uh, uh, screen you can see here and you can see basically lots of things here. So down there you can see from down from the left you can see the fi2 how much oxygen you're giving which is about 43 percent and you can see also lots of other elements here like the frequency 
which is 10 as we said and also you can see here the map which is uh, 14 uh, that's uh, being given to the child and the amplitude as we said so basically you, you can dial any of these numbers and increase and decrease to to achieve the proper uh, uh, saturation there is also a number here down there you can see it down from the right 289 289 that's dco2 which we're going to talk about later on so to adjust your uh, high frequency uh, ventilation settings you have few options here so if you have low saturations for example or poor oxygenation you can increase either your FiO2 or you can increase your map and how you're going to increase that you can increase it by one to two centimeter uh, 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 in a step uh, and uh, if you have high saturations then then you can wean down your oxygen through the eye uh, reducing FiO2 or you can decrease your map uh, on the other side if you have a high CO2 you can increase your amplitude as we said previously it works like the rate and uh, or you can reduce your uh, uh, frequency but we said we're going to speak to the consultant first before changing that okay the uh, uh, the other thing here which we need to speak about so how you going to set up your ventilator so basically if you're moving from conventional ventilation to uh, high frequency so you need to check first what was your map in your uh, uh, conventional ventilation mood so for example if it was uh, 12 then you can add 2 and then you start uh, at a map of 14 uh, so basically you can as we said you can go up by one to two centimeter water uh, until your oxygenation improve and you need also to check the uh, chest wobbles basically so this is another uh, indication of effective ventilation in this condition so basically if you uh, have good chest movement or vibration with the ventilator so that's a good thing and you will need to set up your frequency to 10 as we said how you're going to monitor uh, simply monitoring your saturations on the monitor monitoring also the chest wobbles so basically if it's effective uh, if the chest wall is effectively moving with your ventilation and also if you have uh, if you do an uh, initial chest x-ray uh, after you start your high frequency to check how uh, distended is the um, basically the lungs so you're aiming for eight trips and if it's higher than that you need to reduce your uh, map uh, you need to repeat also a chest x-ray to assess the expansion later on in four to six hours and if you do any acute changes then you need or if there's any new uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, change uh, in the baby you need to repeat another chest uh, chest x-ray and of course you will need to do frequent gases in this condition there is another thing here which can monitor you how effective you ventilate your uh, alveoli basically uh, which is the dco2 and this is calculated by the formula down there actually it's calculated by the ventilator so you don't have to worry about it but you need to make sure that's running between 40 to 80 cubic mils uh, for per second per one kilogram so for example if the the child is or the baby is two kilogram so it needs to run from 80 to 60 okay and you need to document that nurses need to document that hourly just to make sure you're maintaining stable ventilation so how to wean you start weaning the oxygen first uh, because basically we know all about the harmful effect of giving very high oxygen concentration to the baby like you know uh, the retinopathy or prematurity and lots of other things so the good thing is to reduce your fio2 first so if you manage to go down uh, uh, to uh, about 40 percent or less than that then you can start winning the map and uh, you will win the map as we said previously uh, uh, in one to two centimeter water down if you reach eight to ten uh, this would be great because this is the next step before uh, weaning him to conventional or extubation and uh, to if you reduce the uh, if you do the chest x-ray for example we said previously that uh, the uh, the lungs shouldn't be overinflated 
uh, more than eight trips so if it's more than nine trips for example then you have to reduce the map also you can wean the amplitude uh, by two to four centimeter water uh, and basically uh, uh, if you have a good co2 clearance in this condition and don't wean the frequency and keep it at 10 unless your senior decides to change uh, you need to think uh, of switching to conventional if you reach down the map of 8 to 10 centimeter and amplitude of 20 to 25. Thank you very much. Please feel free to ask any questions in the uh, uh, comment section. Thank you.